move on now to our final speaker of today's session, uh, Min Gao. Min Gao is a Robert Turner Research Associate. We're very pleased to welcome Min as a speaker, in particular as a tribute to our greatly missed fellow, Professor Jenny Turner, who set up these visiting scholarships in memory of her husband, Robert. They're aimed at anyone visiting from abroad who works in the field of diabetes or related disciplines at the University of Oxford. Min's talk is entitled, Dietary Patterns, Cardiovascular Disease and All-Cause Mortality. Thanks, Michael, for the introduction. And thank you all for having me to present our research entitled Associations Between Dietary Patterns and Cardiovascular Disease and All-Cause Mortality from the UK Biobank. So energy, fat, sugar, fiber are our body consumes the most. And many studies and the current dietary uh, recommendations have found that reductions in saturated fat and free sugars and increases in dietary fiber are associated with a reduced risk of CVD and all-cause mortality. However, previous evidence usually focused on single nutrients but in real life, these nutrients coexist in many common foods, and studies focusing solely on individual nutrients may obscure the combined effects. So despite years of public health efforts, population dietary change has been slow, and this may reflect in part the difficulties of translating present dietary recommendations into food-based public, public health advice, and some existing recommendations are not universally echoed across countries. And increasingly, uh, researchers have tried to categorize dietary patterns and reduce re regression as um, data dimension reduction technique that aims to identify the combination of food groups that explain the maximum amount of variation in a set of response variables, which could review population specific food preference. Uh, so in this, so in this study, we aim to identify food-based dietary patterns explaining the variability in nutrient response variables, hypothesized to be on the casual pathway between common food groups and the CBD and all cosmetality events, which are energy density, free sugars, saturated fat, and fiber intakes. And secondly, to investigate their associations with total CVD and all cause mortality. So, Ecobi Bank is a prospective study that has recruited half a million participants aged 30 to 70 at baseline. It linked to uh, national hospital and mortality records. Also, Ecobi Bank collected demographics lifestyle information, physical measurements, and blood sample, etc. And for diet, we used uh, dietary intake data collecting using the uh, Oxford WebQ and recorded food and drinks were classified into 50 groups according to their nutrient profile or culinary use. And the Oxford WebQ was collected at baseline and on up to four separate occasions. And this study used data from participants that completed a dietary, uh, a dietary assessment on two or more occasions. Here and this flow charts illustrate the how we school the people, and for example, people with less than two assessments or with impossible energy intake, etc., will be excluded. And finally, a total of 116,000 participants were included. And in this study, 4,200 cases of, of incident CVD, 838 CVD deaths, and 3,000. 300 deaths from all causes were identified. So the first aim of this study is to identify food-based uh, dietary, dietary patterns. Here we only list food groups with uh, uh, which contributed to dietary patterns the most for dietary pattern one was categorized by high intakes of chocolate and confectionery, butter, low fiber, 
bread, a table of sugars, and low intakes of fresh fruits, vegetables, and the high fiber uh, breakfast cereals. And the dietary pattern too is more unusual. And um, this pattern was categorized by a high intake of sugar sweetened beverages, uh, fruit juice, table sugars and preserves, uh, chocolate and low intake of high fat cheese and butter. So, and then the second aim is to investigate the associations between derived the two main dietary patterns with total safety and all cause mortality. And here we did a uh, with this blind plot to visualize the association between dietary patterns and health outcomes. And in this slide, we find a positive linear association between bedroom pattern one and uh, total safety and all cause mortality. It is notable that people in the lowest uh, bedroom pattern uh, quantile had mean intakes of energy from saturated fat of 9.7%, which was very close to the national and, and, and international recommendations. And free sugars accounted for 8.8% of uh, total energy, which was below the WHO guidelines. And the associations of dietary pattern two with total CV and all cause mortality was linear, with only evidence of increased risk for those with, with the highest uh, dietary pattern scores. And this dietary pattern is striking because people in the highest quintile with very uh, very high free sugars intake more than three times the UK dietary guidelines otherwise had a really healthy lifestyle and their intake of saturated fat met the recommendations level which is 10 percent from the national guidelines so the uh, two principal uh, Dietary patterns were identified from the sample of middle-aged British adults, and it is clear that healthier diet, diets can, can contain more fresh foods and vegetables, high-fiber breakfast cereals and other grains, and less chocolate and confectionery. Uh, table sugar and preserves, and low-fiber breads, which provides evidence for food-based UK dietary guidelines. Um, and also, the study supports the dietary recommendations to limit saturated fat and free sugars and increase fiber intake. And uh, also, uh, thanks to my amazing collaboration leaders and founders uh, for this study, and this, uh, this research is dedicated to Jenny Turner. She offered me the Robert Turner Associateship, which allowed me to join the college. But sadly, she passed away last November. Um, she was a valuable asset to the college and a mentor and a friend to me, and she will be greatly missed. Also, today is the start of Chinese New Year 2021, the year of the ox. And I wish you all a safe and blessing ox year. And thank you. I'm happy to take questions. Great. Thank, thank, thank you, Min. Uh, can I remind uh, our audience that you can send questions into Q&A? Um, Min, I was I was wondering how the food industry would uh, see your work. Do you uh, have any dialogue with the food industry? Uh, no, haven't. We just finished the draft, uh, but we will continue by uh, uh, dialogue with other factories. As you suggested, yeah. Okay, we've got a question from Keith Frain has come in. He says. Were you able to look at intermediate factors, for example, LDL cholesterol? Good question. Yes, we actually we did in the manuscript, and it turns out um, BMI and cholesterol, all those uh, biomarkers, um, significant biomarkers like LDL, HDL, uh, blood uh, blood pressure, those could be the mediators. 
between the data and pattern one and health outcomes. And to be uh, to our, um, uh, but we also noticed that um, just for uh, BMI is the only mediator between the data and pattern two and the outcomes. So this is the new, uh, new like, um, founding of the research because data and pattern two is based on uh, we call a sweet data pattern and BM BMI is the sig significant mediator between the associations. Yes. Min, is this work continuing? And if, if so, how, how are you extending the study? Well, we actually already finished this project and um, we're already in, on, the, on the process of the publication and it's um, BMC Medicine. I hopefully it will come out very soon, hopefully. Good. Good. And uh, what are you going to do next? Um, I think I will still continue to compare um, two uh, like dietary patterns in different uh, population, different populations, such as uh, like I'm from China. I could just compare like uh, Chinese dietary patterns and UK dietary patterns and compare their risks um, of developing uh, some chronic disease like CVD or diabetes, etc. Okay, we have a message from uh, Paul Brankin. He says, thank you for your talk and the reminder of Jenny and Robert Turner. And he expresses a thought which I suspect a lot of us have thought. He says, I love chocolate. Do you have any data about chocolates that are safer? And he also says, happy new year. <laughs> thank you. But because from this study, we focused on dietary pattern. It's not just one single food group because we try to uh, find out the main dietary patterns um, from the EcoBiobank data set. And we find out, find out like high energy intakes uh, and high sugar, in, high free sugar intakes will increase the risk of CBN or all cause mortality. But we haven't, focused, because we didn't focus on the single nutrients because we, we hope to you know, general, generalize the research of the uh, research findings. So we can't just focus on one single uh, food group, sadly. Uh, and a question from Rebecca Ritchie Timms. She says, do you find the difference in the recommended saturated fat intake and the results of your research concerning for public health? Uh, in just the intakes or their associations, sorry. She says, do you find the difference in the recommended saturated fat intake and the results of your research concerning for public health? So it's, it's the- Well, actually, thank you. Actually, we'll find the similar evidence from the UK, uh, from UK uh, dietary uh, guidelines. And also we find people with the lowest uh, risk of uh, safety and all cause mortality. Actually, they all met the, and even lower than the recommended level. Yes. Good. I mean, I think that is all of the questions that have come through on the chat. So